Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take a look at this, the HT208D clamp meter from Kawitz. But before we do, I need your help. I have experienced an unexpected, sharp, surprising drop in revenue from the YouTube channel in this past month. Now, YouTube revenue is always fluctuating, but it's dropped 300 bucks. That's significant. So if you could, please share this video and share any video you want, but share them, try and help me get my views up. Okay. Also, I've got a new shirt in the store and it's on sale. This one's very cool. There'll be a little thing for it at the end of this video. Let's get into taking a look at the Kiwiks. Let's see what we got here. Safety statement. This is one of their top of the line meters. This retails for uh, $90 American. Let's see if we can get a look at the specs here. Man, it is noisy today. There's all kinds of traffic out there. No, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Hold on. Okay, here are our specs. This is a 6,000 count true RMS meter with an update of approximately three times a second. 10 mega ohms input impedance. Operating voltage 1.5 volts. Wait, but I don't really care about any of that stuff. So DC volts, 600 millivolts up to 600 volts with a resolution ranging from 0.1 millivolt to 0.1 volt. So that's not bad, 0.5 to 5% accuracy. Second range, uh, 1,000 volts, resolution is 1 volt. AC volts, we have uh, 600 millivolts, 6 volts, 60 volts, 600 volts, 750 volts, and then we have our VFD 750. That's where we can just put it near it. Again, good. And our AC amps, 60, 600, and 1,000. Resistance. I'm going to tell you what it goes up. It goes up to 60 ohms. Capacitance on to 10 millifarad. No, up to 100 millifarad. It's got a second range. Very nice. Frequency, uh, up to 10 megahertz. Cool. Duty cycle, 1 to 99%. Well, that's pretty much all you can have. Otherwise, it's either on or off, right? <laughs> so this thing's got a lot of features to it. Pretty cool. Let's go back through here. Let me see what some of the features are. You can skip over this book reading if you don't like it. I won't cry. So we have AC measurement with inrush, which is very nice. When you turn on a power supply, you sometimes get an, uh, in current, an inrush of current as capacitors charge or inductors. And uh, this will actually show it, and it tells you what you have to do is with the device turned off, turn the meter to the proper range, center the jaw around the device's live wire, that's the clamp there in the meter, push the function button three times until you see inrush, switch on the device, and the spike is displayed. Very nice. We have AC measurement with uh, variable frequency filtering. Voltage with variable frequency, high input uh, impedance. We also have low input voltage measuring, which will help you get rid of some phantom voltages. But, you know, you're just playing around at home. It's really not that big of a deal. Automatic shutdown after 15 minutes. Auto ranging. AC zero input. Test lead. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let's get it out. Let's see what's in here. All right. We have our standard set of Chinesium probes. Only the highest quality. I swear it looks like an S. Piss cell batteries. Excellent. Only the finest. Got a thermocouple. We have our device. And of course, we have a, a semi hard shell clam style carrying case. And this has a, a black OLED screen, which. I think it's pretty nice. Put some batteries in here. And see what there is to see, right? One moment. All right, so this is pretty big. 
Got another one around here. Somewhere. I found it. If you saw what the rest of this area here looked like, you'd be scared. So, the Kiwi's meter is a little over nine inches long. Whereas this one, a different brand, which is what I've seen most uh, clamp meters at, six and a half inches. So you can see there is a uh, considerable size difference. All right, so let's turn it on here. Nice, easily viewable screen. We have our VFD inrush. So if we put this thing to say 60 amps and we press that function button three times, you can see we got inrush there. Try to think if I can set something up for inrush current. We'll get back to that. Then we also have voltage, which is VFD, frequency. Here we have uh, resistance, continuity, diode, capacitance, temperature. We have a voltage down here, and also this is our low Z voltage. I don't know how well you can see that, but it says low Z. Then we have our non-contact voltage, which you can clearly hear. Feels rugged. No crackling noises when you put some torque on it. Always a good thing. So as for our controls, well, we have our trigger. Do it the right hand if you like. We have our selection knob. We have our function button. We have the uh, range button, not random, which is what I was going to say. Min max and uh, relative zero. This is the random button. You just press it, you get a random reading. Man, that's, what a day. I missed the switch. The hold and light switch. So anyway, I put some leads in here, and they are the Probe Master leads. We test all meters on this channel with the same set of leads. That way we eliminate any manufacturing differences in all the different kinds of leads that are available out there. And every all the readings we see apply only to the multimeter and won't have anything to do with the actual leads. So that's why we do that. I know a lot of people like to complain about it. Continuity, diode, auto. All right, there we go. Now this is showing me, oh yeah, nine megs. Very good. Take it down to one meg. 0.997. That's is good, yeah. It's the muy bien. Let's try some low readings. Here's a one ohm. 3.4. Yeah, tell you what we'll do. Just for S and G's. Well, we had it. There we go. So we've uh, zeroed this out. Now there's there's all of these connections, all these resistors, this wire, the wire and the leads. We're never going to get an exact low reading. There's just too much resistance in all these wires. It should be close. That's yeah, better to two. You know, if you need high precision, low resistance readings, you're probably not using the clamp meter anyway. Let's try 1K. Yeah. The resistance is right on. And I think we're going to find that everything is pretty much right on. Modern meters, you know, they use a chip. There's really not that much to go wrong with them. All right, it's in continuity mode. Beautiful. Diode mode. All right, we've got our diodes here. Start with the shot key diode, which should give us a drop, what, 
point two to point three, somewhere in there. I'm sorry, that's a silicone diode. Point six. This must be our shot key. Yep. Point two one. All right, let's start low here. Red LED should be about 1.8 volt drop. 1.8. I know you guys can't read this screen. OLED screens are not picked up by the camera very well. And also, it's too bright. Let me turn off a couple of these lights. Maybe that'll help. Can you see that better now? Probably not. Uh, how about that? That's yeah, not too bad. All right, let's do that again. There's red, which lights. A yellow, which lights. Green. Blue. And white. 2.6. So they're probably putting out about, this thing's probably putting out about 3 volts. Which is reasonable. We're testing the diodes. No problem there. All right, we've got our voltage standard warmed up. It's set on 2.5 volts. Here on our low V, low impedance, you can see we have 2.504 volts. And if we go up to variable frequency, it's exactly the same. So no worries there. Take it up to 5 volts here. Good. 7.5. Good. And 10. Yeah. Like I said, modern meters are relatively accurate, and we really don't have any sorts of issues with them. All right. It's been about three hours since the other part of that video. I was looking for this thing, which is an incredibly bright uh, halogen bulb. This is the... Uh, Quartz line tungsten halogen lamp from GE. 100 watts, 120 volts. Almost set my desk on fire with this last week. Like, dude, it is incredibly bright. So, let us go to current, inrush. This is AC, so it doesn't matter which line we put it on. We shall put that there like that. And I'm looking for something to block the light. One moment. This should work for a few seconds. And one, a two, a three. <laughs> we got no inrush current at all. Let's try it again. All right. Try it on the other wire. Shouldn't matter. But we'll try it there. We'll try it there anyway. Nope, nothing. Lovely. Let's try just, uh, Regular current. Yeah, it's showing 1.92 amps, so that's working fine. Well, there's nothing to charge, so I guess that's why there's no inrush current. We need something with some capacitors, don't we? What do I got? What do I got? Let me think. Right there's where I almost set the desk on fire. All right, while we're while I'm trying to think of what I got that I could charge up and that I can get that clamp you know, on. I got all kinds of stuff I can charge up, but you gotta be able to get to the wires, so. Let's see what's inside. Of course, the best thing about a clamp meter is you don't have to be too worried about getting shocked when you're doing your current readings, so you don't have to be touching anything. 
you just wrap the wire around it while it's off. Then you can turn it on while it's hanging there, you don't have to touch it. So it's kind of a safety thing, also a convenience thing. Hopefully this thing doesn't come flying out of here in a million pieces and spraying it all over the, the room, that's all I need. That's it. Oh, good. It all holds together. Okay. So we do have some protection down there. That's good. Just looking to see what we see here. So we've got two PTCs. We've got a resistor, a couple melts. There's some more melts. I'm looking for diode protection, which is something you, you generally see in multimeters. But, you know, I'm pretty much blind, so could be there, and I'd never see it. Capacitors. What the hell do those things say? I have no idea what those are. I can't read them. I'll have to look in when I'm editing it. So I think from a current standpoint, it is 100% safe to use on just about any voltage that you're going to encounter. From a voltage standpoint, well, you're gonna have to be more careful. So overall, I am a fan. This is a nice solid meter, it's accurate, it's relatively safe. I mean, it's got a good level of protection in it that we don't often see from Chinese meters. Is it as safe as a fluke? No, but it's $90, and the um, comparable fluke meter, which I would believe will be the 45 Mike Uniform 5.5, is uh, $550. Is the fluke that much better? No. But fluke has to charge you that much, so that if you blow your fingers off, they got money when your family sues them. At least that's just my humble opinion. Anyway, I like the Co the Coeats meter, so thank you very much to Coeats for sending this out to us. Thank you guys for watching. Um, look over here now. So I've got a new t-shirt. This is the Fett family t-shirt featuring the brothers J. Fett, Moss Fett, and Boba Fett. Available in yellow, a couple different greens, purple, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Got them in lots of colors. Anyway. Until the kid goes back to school August 15th, they're on sale for $19.99. Out of that, I make $6. So, buy a shirt. I'm running out of money. All right, guys, that's it. Please, share a video if you can. I'm out. Peace.